109. So it is currently 109. <laughs> Copenhagen, Denmark. So I'm just walking down the street here. Um, I came across like a Mexican uh, themed restaurant. This is the Border Burgers and Burgers Burgers versus uh, Burritos. I don't particularly care to have a bur uh, any food right now because I've already eaten, but I saw something familiar and I'm gonna uh, draw your attention to it. Check it out. Here I am, early, well, it's, yeah, it's 11, 11.06 right now. I'm about to head out, I'm getting hydrated. I should probably take this with me. This is my room. All right, I should be hydrated. I'll go get some breakfast. Make sure I have my key. Got the key right here. Cool. Hey everybody. All right. So I was just getting ready, and I walked out my door, and I was ready for. New York ready to attack it okay I want to explain a little something about the situation on this elevator right so oh by the way the GoPro is affixed to my uh, left strap on my um, backpack and so it's all the footage is kind of you know skewed to the left side because it was hanging over all right there are these two dudes I think they're German they're on the um on the elevator already and then these next two dudes come into the um the door as well right this is what i wanted to tell you about the elevator but anyway all of the footage is being um shot to the left side it's it's skewed because it's on the left side and it i guess it was kind of leaning to the left sort of <laughs> you dig but anyway yo so those first two dudes who were already on the elevator were in the back Right, I was kind of between them. All right, then this Asian dude gets on. Now I think the four guys who were already on there, they were German, whatever. Okay, they paid no mind, didn't say hello. There was nothing like that, right? But it was a matter of like um, jockeying for position to get off this elevator. So look, the first two dudes in front of me, they get off. Then the guy that was in the back jumps in front of me. Okay, here's this. Okay, this guy jumps in front right there, and I'm like, dude, when am I getting out? So I jumped in. He's walking. He's talking because he's thinking that his buddy is right behind him. Now, there his buddy is. He ran up there, you know, to catch up with him. Like, oh, yes, yes. I was listening to all the things that you were saying. I'm right behind you. I was just, uh, you know, uh, disturbed, rudely disturbed by this Negro. He jumped in front and, nah, man. Yeah, I took it a little personal because the dude just walked. He just basically, he assumed first in, first out. <laughs> And I was like, no, but I'm closer to the door. So he just jumped in front of me and went on out. And I was like, the audacity. What? Amanda Seals. The caucasity. German dudes. He was probably just very rigid and, and thinking orderly. First in, first out. You know, whatever. The first brother I see right here, he's setting up tables and stuff for a local um, restaurant. Anyway, yeah, I was perturbed by that elevator incident. Because the dude was like, we're leaving and you should be right behind me. And he was like, oh, but you're not behind me, but I'm speaking. Are you not listening to me kind of thing? Like, and I was right behind him like, yo, this dude really thinks that I'm his boy right behind him. 
Like, yo, they just got off and they didn't. They were completely oblivious to me. To my presence. That was just whack, yo. Here it is. Another day walking down the street in uh, New York City. Yeah, dig. Got the little camera on. I think I noticed people, you know, their sort of reactions were slightly different when they saw the camera. You know, nothing big, no major changes, but just some slight, subtle, subtle differences. All right, so I'm on my way to the Comfort Diner. I can tell you about the Comfort Diner. I'm, I don't show you the food, um, but yeah, you just know I ate there, right? I think it was on 48th Street, so I have a couple of blocks to go. All right, the first day I went there, I guess I was early. Yeah, I got there super early when they just opened. I sat down and i ordered my food i ordered um egg whites grits bacon and some coffee and they brought it to me and everything was good no problems whatsoever the 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 wait staff was like uh and here you go my love is everything okay she was all so sweet and all that kind of stuff and she and then when i paid for the meal she was like oh yes you ate healthy i, I should eat, eat healthy too or whatever and i'm just like okay but peep game that was the first day, and the first day was beautiful. But the second day, right, they were far more crowded, okay? So I guess that's the reason why this happened. They were far more crowded, so I placed the order, and I placed the order with the old guy, right? And I thought the order was simple enough, easy enough for him to remember and not, you know, muck it up. So here's what happened, right? I ordered egg whites, grits, eggs rye toast and some coffee i mean i got the rye toast the first time too i didn't mention it but i just i had to mention it for de for detail's sake for it to be very specific so what does he bring me he brings me scrambled eggs oh yeah i didn't mention the eggs were to be scrambled the first day they were scrambled that's what i asked for that that's what i was good for everything was was right okay uh, but they were supposed to be egg whites. He just brings me like plain eggs, right? So they're all yellow. And I'm like, yo, what's up? They didn't get the order right. I'm not going to make the fuss about it. So I'm just like, well, whatever. They're just busy and they, I can't be picky today, right? They can't pay attention to details, right? So, dude. Okay, so the, the eggs met, were, were wrong. The grits were something about the grits just weren't weren't right i think they they i think the whole plate had been left out a little too too long waiting for something to be um, prepared because the grits weren't hot um the bacon looked like it was it was pretty bad the bacon wasn't fresh like again the first day that i ate the bacon there it was like hot it was um it was kind of oily but the bacon they brought me that day was or the day that you're looking at um it was uh, dry. It was terrible. And uh, so the bacon was dry. It was like it was a uh, day old or something. Or it came from someone else's plate. Someone else who didn't eat their bacon. I was like, this is terrible. Um, the eggs were wrong. Um, the grits weren't, you know, the best. The coffee was just fine. And then the, the bread was, you know, you can't really muck up bread. But that's what happened, y'all. So the second time I went to the Comfort Diner, it wasn't the best experience. And, um, yeah, I took it personally. I was like, did they purpose, did he purposely say, uh, he asked for egg whites, but skip that. We, we're not even going to give him that. What's he going to do? It's only one guy sort of thing. Nah, I mean, I don't think any, I don't think he operates that way. But he's just an old dude who just got confused and... And didn't get my order right. So that was the next thing. The second thing that happened that day. That, that was just like. Yo man. You think you're going to have a good day? <laughs> Watch what happens to you brother. <laughs> nah. So anyway. This is me. I'm still making my way to the comfort diner. You dig? Oh. The US Open is going on. Right? I think this was the day after Serena lost and yeah i think this was that day so the day after serena lost it was you know it was 
bum, you know, the bum me day. Like, oh man. <clears throat> but but TFO, TFO, you know, did his thing. So that was dope. You know, it was. It's all about supporting black athletes. Put a crown on them all. Supporting. I'm supporting everybody who's black, y'all. Let's get it right, okay? Um, yeah. So that's what happened. So I'm still walking, still making my way to the um, the Comfort Diner, just uh, two blocks. Uh, what down? Two blocks down from um the the hotel where i was staying and then you know turn right <clears throat> yeah it was busy it was a busy day so and when i pull up here then i have to wait in line so but that's about it there's nothing more to say about the comfort diner it was comfortable i was glad to have uh, found it because i love grits grits grit, grits y'all and they served me grits twice so no matter no matter what i was still a happy camper you can kind of see the the sign up there the come the comfort diet. there we go i did it i leaned back lean back i lean back yeah started off the gate on some flow joe ish shout out to fat joe don't ask me which train to take in order to get from Manhattan to the Brooklyn Museum I forgot um, I should be able to tell you however let's see I've since I've left I've left uh, New York I've deleted the app from my phone and um, well my wife gave me a, a subway map so if I look at that I can tell you All right, so I took the green line. The green one is uh, number four. It's either the four or five train. I took the four train from um, from Manhattan. That's just me, though. That's just me. I took number four, didn't I? I remember waiting. Yeah, I waited for number four, and I waited for number six. Let's see. The number six will get you there, too, right? I hope. Four and six. There's four. There's five. Nope. So four, yeah, I took the number four train. So whatever. <clears throat> yeah, it was it was easy to to learn the subway system and get into it. I mean, I'm I'm a world traveler, so I've I've done this. Um, yeah, it was. But you know, the first mistake I made, I got on the wrong side of the track, and they had no access to the other side. So I paid like two dollars to enter, and there was no way to get refunded. You had to exit that section, go upstairs onto the street and go across the street and come back in and pay again for entry. So you've got to know. You've got to know. There was an attendant there, so he could have helped, which would have been fine. But, you know, New Yorkers are savvy. They have emergency exits and they just leave them open. So next, um, you know, passengers don't even pay. They're like, man, they trying to charge us? Man, bump that. We'll show them. So I saw emergency exit, you know, uh, available all the time. Like, oh my goodness, it's this is wild. Yeah, there was no emergency. It was just a matter of human decency, I guess. All right, boss. All right, I think we got. It. I'm just gonna ask for one favor. What's the it? backpack. You gotta leave it on the coach. Find the white boy. I say no. It's not my it's all bad. You go. Thank you. Yo, so I'm at the Brooklyn Museum. I've got the um, the GoPro attached to my shoulder, so you're watching the footage um, I captured. Um, I was told to go to the Brooklyn Museum. I was recommended, you know, that is fly. I was not disappointed. And um, on this day in particular, it was important to go because they had the Virgil Abloh exhibit. And uh, that's what I'm filming. That's what, that's the first exhibit I entered. So, Virgil Abloh. Now, for transpa transparency, 
um, I didn't know who Virgil Abloh really was. I think I had heard of him. I had seen something about him uh, with Kanye one year. And then when he died, um, of course, I caught wind of what was happening or what had, what had happened. So sadly, the brother passed away, I believe, at 41 of, due to cancer. And um, yeah... But he was, he was a Ghanaian, American, and the dude was um, phenomenal. He was a genius. He did some amazing things. Very powerful black man. Powerful, influential. You know, right there near Kanye. Or I think he he inspired Kanye. You dig? I think that's how dope this is. That's how dope he was. Um, his influence. Uh, Spanned uh, fashion and, um, you know, fashion, including footwear, um, you know, art. You know, there are art exhibits or there are um, art works of art that, uh, you know, design. I don't know. I, I really don't know. I'm not the best person to describe this. But, hey, I was there and I watched this um I witnessed this exhibit. I should have leaned down so you can see the the model of the of New York. Shame on me. Sorry, poor videography. But this happened. What's that? What does the camera do, man? This one? Hi. Yeah. It's, so I'm that's filming. dope. Is it like three six? Uh, no, it's not three sixty. What is it? Just what's in front of you? Yeah, just GoPro. Yeah. GoPro, that's what it's called? Yep. Can you put it in your car too? Can I put it on, on in a car? In your car, yes, yeah. Yes. GoPro? Yeah. Oh, GoPro, I'm gonna look into it. I like that. Alright, let me give you my information so I'm you can find this video and then you can see yourself in the video. Oh, dope, <laughs> dope. Happy Sunday, people. Will do. I Advertisement that's on the billboard. What's that? This is the advertisement that's on the billboards. That's why I turned my back to the video. I'm, I was on purpose. <laughs> I try to be on purpose like Beyonce and Ablo, you know? Right you on. know? Right on. Take a page of, of, out of a greatness book. Yo, I'm bugging by what she said. She said she tries to be on purpose. She meant intentional with her actions. Like, yo, our society, our jobs, our responsibilities have us just being robotic rather than thinking for ourselves and acting for ourselves. And I was like, yo, I've, I've been being intentional with my stuff. And I'm like, yo, you're, you're not functioning this way? I'm like, dude. But, um homegirl knew her stuff she was uh talking to me um a patron as well as um counting the number of people at the same time and then she was also sharing information about the exhibits like yo she was she was doing her job very well so you know peace and uh shout out to that queen for all of that chicago illinois you don't even need a ticket okay. you didn't even need a ticket and your ticket is inside your map. Okay. Enjoy your visit. When you when you do conclude this gallery, I do highly recommend Duke Riley and Nellie May Rowe. It's both on the fourth floor. You're gonna love it. All right. This is number twenty-three. This is a seat from the state letter from the United Nations. Okay. Check me out. What does uh, the clock mean on there to you? What does it recommend, re uh, represent for you? Well, it's just that time. Oh, oh. So, I see those numbers, 109. Oh, okay, I'll tell you what. On this wall, outside the social structure, the wall before you enter it, he designed a clock for Louis Vuitton. It's in the opposite time, okay. but the same, it's the opposite, but the same exact time. Okay. Yeah, you might take that. All right. Here, a lot of people miss it. All right. Thanks for choosing us today. Uh, 
so first off shame on me for not knowing about the brother but you know what a lot of the experiences that I've had you know I haven't I, I didn't come to the table knowing everything while I experienced it speaking of travels you dig um, after my travels I had to do a little bit of research into the places that I've been like like Sweden um, yeah I didn't know where to go and what to look for in Sweden um, in fact I walked right past like where the kings are buried it's a big church and I was just like eh, that's just another building just another um, church no that was the building the place where the they 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 buried their like four different kings like yo that's monumental for them right so um yeah so i had to do some research and stuff and i'm just happy that i was there you know put yourself in places that you you aren't familiar with and and in that sense you grow and you learn so um first off i will say that the videography is horrible it's terrible i have these beautiful shots of those walls in the back and not the artwork that's because <clears throat> excuse me when i entered the exhibit this was like the first time i was using the um the shoulder camera and all and um the gopro on my shoulder and uh yeah i hadn't tested it i, I didn't see I, I you know i didn't know what exactly i was looking at um should have ran it should have run a test but uh, anyhow <clears throat> i was there virgil abloh brooklyn museum that's that yeah terrible uh videography though it may be all right now what happened is um they give you the um the booklet that explains they give you some insight into each work of art right from fashion to whatever artwork and et cetera, et cetera. And, and each exhibit, each each work of art, each thing um, is numbered. So I'm looking around and I'm like, yo, there are a lot of pieces here. And the numbers are increasing. So I'm like, oh, we are going to get to 109. We're going to get there. You dig? You're at 109 right now. Thank you, Kobe. They, I was like, he has a hundred, over a hundred and nine items, works of art, you know, pieces, you know, for you to gander, you know, appreciate, etc. So I was like, okay, I was anticipating it, of course. This was this this was not um, serendipity. This was like it was it was bound to happen. It was coming up. I, I was very very much ex expected this to happen. But I didn't know what, you know, 109 um, would be about. So I'm just taking my time leisurely looking at all of these uh, pieces and just, you know, checking them out. Like, oh, that's nice. That's interesting. Okay. But not having a, a deeper understanding of the artist, of the, the, the designer um, and whatnot, you know. I really couldn't relate or appreciate it, you know, so deeply. I think some of those um, patrons, those museum patrons were like design students, like maybe fashion design, you know, and they dug his style and everything. But anyway, on the um, the video screen, there was uh, Shakari Richardson. And I was like, check that out. They, they pay an homage to the young sister who's a, who's a fast runner. Little do they know. You know, I'm related to Flo Jo, the one who holds the record, who has held the record for 34 years. Like, you dig? But anyway, that's the American flag. An outfit made out of American flag garments. Like, mm, that's interesting. Wear, wear the American flag. Yes, you can wear it. Again, I'm taking my time just walking over here. What I'm going to do... Is I'm going to read the excerpt or the description. Check out that that fly stuff right there. Interesting. Very interesting. I'm going to read what it says about um, Peace 109. It says, um, before we get there, you'll see it in a second. It says, Virgil Abloh, 109, Virgil Abloh, Rockford, Illinois, 1980 through 2021. Chicago, Illinois. It's called Options. 
in piece 109 is called options 2009 it's 16 lead evidence markers you know for bullets you know lead evidence markers courtesy of gymnastics art institute and virgil abloh securities okay it says the description abloh regularly borrowed objects signs and symbols from his surroundings for his work here in a darker turn he calls attention to a grim part of urban landscapes crime scene signage in a city familiar with gun violence, Ablo asks viewers to select the path of creativity that he had chosen rather than that of self-destructiveness. There you have it, y'all. He wished hope and, and upliftment of his people. Just like Nipsey, he wants us to walk in our greatness collectively you dig speaking of walking in our greatness collectively there was a a huge party outside for i think um the west indies i saw a lot of trinidadian flags trinidad and tobago and i think i saw a dude with the jamaican flag running around it was a very much a caribbean vibe going on outside um the museum that day big up bless up yeah anyhow i'm making my way um from there to uh, the rest of the exhibits but that virgil abloh you know respect respect to him all right so i'm making my way uh, on another floor um, this must be the second floor of the uh the brooklyn museum just making my way Looking at some artwork, noticing some artworks uh, as opposed to others, and just moving, just moving along in the gallery. You dig? And I, I noticed the bust of Abraham Lincoln, so I stopped to admire it and film it and, and what have you. And there you go. Abraham Lincoln. Yep. So the next work um, that I will comment on or that... I, you know the the description I read um, it's very interesting uh, work you're gonna see it it's at the end of the hall here I'm coming up on it and I will let the audio that I record I will let that play all right so check it out Francis William Edmonds All Talk and No Work features two figures, one white and one African American, who appear to be mid-conversation outside a barn. Although both wear tattered clothing and neither is engaged in productive work, unequal power dynamics are suggested. Leaning lazily on a pitchfork, the white farmer towers over the black figure, presumably well, presumably his laborer, who holds an empty basket and gestures with his other hand. This genre, this genre painting evokes the work of William Sidney Mount, whose farmyard subjects and anecdotal characterizations of Yale men and African Americans were highly popular with New York audiences. Edmund's treatment of the black figure is neither idealized in Mount's manner nor caricatured as in works by other genre artists, but the painting's enigmatic visual clues might be interpreted as an attempt to justify or obscure the racism of the error. Looks like he needs a place to stay, a studio to rent. All right. So the artwork was being used to obscure the racism of the day, to pacify the people and let them know, man, don't worry about that, that racism. Don't worry about that slavery. Don't worry about inequality. It's okay. Those slaves, those people, they're happy. They're, they're glad to do this work. Don't worry about that. 
Don't worry your pretty little head of those of such things. Relax. You know. So anyway, I'm continuing through this uh, museum. Yeah, and um, let's see what else. What else do we see? We see a female bust, a female body. You dig? Have to always stop to appreciate the female form. After having done the the view or or viewing much of the Greek, you know, sculptures at the Met the other day, it was like, man, where are the females? You dig? Certainly didn't see as many as the male figures, but anyway, anyhow, I believe this is the second floor. Walking through here. Oh yeah, so there's like some furniture and some stuff and, and there's an interesting room designed by an artist and all of this stuff. But none of this really moved me, excited me, you know, intrigued me. It was like, eh, that's cool. Uh, the reality is art is everywhere. Art is in everything. You dig? Look at that room. That was all designed. You dig? That's dope. But we're going to move on to... Um, a black uh, woman artist and just as the young woman um, you know the museum attendant you know informed me it would be an exhibit that I would like it certainly was something that I could relate to so here it comes yeah. was pretty cool. So this is pretty cool. The house that, it's made out of popcorn. That popcorn mm -hmm. was yeah. like what? Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so we're on, I believe, a new floor at the Brooklyn Museum. And uh, this wide expanse of space, you know, was just, it was just ripe for, you know, playing. If I were a child, I would run all the way across this and just have a ball under that, that beautiful, you know, sunlight. So what I did as an adult is I wasn't so interested in filming these women who are in the shot but I was doing a sort of a Fibonacci march Fibonacci right so it's a circle or it's a 
it's a very interesting um, shape. Um, okay, seashells. Look, think about the seashells. You know the spiral seashells, whether it's a conch shell or whether it's some other um, seashell. Think of, or even a snail, you know, the, the curvature of the snail's shell, that, that whole curvature. Well, Fibonacci is a, a numerical, it's a, it's, a, it's a shape, it's a spiral. And so as I was walking that, walking across that, uh, that expanse of space, I was trying to walk in the, in the, the shape of the Fibonacci. You dig? So I tried to do that. Wasn't trying to film those ladies there. Anyway, after I had my little fun walking, you know, all the way over there, I, I made my way to this uh, exhibit, Ancient Egypt. And uh, I would have said Sumerian. I think these were Assyrian, um, you know, carvings and, and what have you. Impressive. You know, nonetheless, um, I saw these for the first time at uh, at LACMA, Los Angeles County Museum of Art. Excuse me. Yep, this is some fly stuff, definitely, and um, some some history that I can appreciate, but I can't really say that I know um, much about it. I'll leave that, leave the details and all for the scholars. Um, but I will say this, these men here are black men. Don't get it twisted. Don't get it twisted. Melanated beings, okay? The universe is melanated. It's deeply, richly melanated. We come from melanated beings. We come from melanin. So everything, as far as it goes back, it's deeply and richly uh, infused with melanin. See those guys right there to the left? They're having way too much fun in there, keeping the jokes to themselves and whatnot. Oh, and then as I approached here, what does it say? From the green Sahara to the Nile, dispelling racism through historical research. In the video, I don't show it, but... I looked down at the uh, display case just under there, and I saw none under, none other than Mr. W. E. B. Du Bois. I was like, "That's what's up." Du Bois came to set the record straight, and then um, when it, Lorraine Hansberry's uh, father, he was also uh, pictured there, as well as uh, someone who I can't remember uh, right now but anyway walking through the Egyptian exhibit again is testament it's to to the melanated beings who came before us so the one thing that I remember the 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 comments the critique that I took away from this is the Brooklyn Museum has an excellent Egyptian exhibit one that like certainly gives one a really good impression of ancient Egypt and I would say that it does a better job than the museums in Los Angeles Brooklyn New York yo you guys take the cake you got it the Brooklyn Museum for the for the ancient Egyptian um, what should I say antiques uh, ephemera maybe um, everything they they got it you can get a really good sense a sense of ancient Egypt without traveling to Egypt by just going to the Brooklyn Museum so I say that because I've been to Egypt and I was of course I was absolutely impressed and I would absolutely tell people to go to Egypt but I mean, if you can't make it to Egypt, yo, go to the Brooklyn Museum and get your facts straight. You dig? All of those stories, don't watch the movies and get your information from that. You've definitely got to go to the, the Brooklyn Museum, for one, and get a glimpse into it. A glimpse into the history. Now, they're not 
explicitly saying these were melanated beings, these were black people, you know, they're not they're not presenting the history like that. But what I'm saying is, and see, and then see, you, you have an image like this that it's going to really confuse you. You're really going to say, "Oh, the Egyptians were white people." Like, nah, uh-uh, don't don't get it twisted, okay? Don't even get it twisted. Someone had to choose these items to put them in the uh, the gallery, and they chose they chose the ones that they wanted to they wanted to include, okay? But it's when you approach some statues like these or come across something like this where you cannot deny the rich melanin in in their in their skin that it really one it exemplifies you know the truth and 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 what it was um but it also yeah it shows you the truth and it makes you think like yo not everybody was like that, so so it's not they're they're not presenting a, you know a very biased uh, case and saying oh all the Egyptians were white that's not it at all. They're very much um, doing the right thing about it, showing you showing you what's up. But then you have to do your own research. You have to look into books by Sheikh Anta Jop, Doctor John Henry Clark, Doctor Ben. My man, Dr. Ivan Van Sertema. You got to look into that. Look at these beautiful black women here. You dig? So, you can... Now, the other thing is, if you're a poor black kid in New York, and you don't have access to this museum, so you can run around and see all of these, um, these melanated ancient beings to say hey her hair is like my mom's hair hey he looks like my best friend he looks like me if you don't have that experience then just like Virgil Abloh says you know we can easily be led down a path of self-destructiveness but see we have to be shown we got to see this history embrace it and know that we are great. We come from greatness. And and we are great. You dig? That's my little waxing poetic on, on the subject. But um, it, it's necessary to say because we don't get that in our schools. We just don't. Well, let me, let me, let me play something here. Who's got it? Who says it best? I'm looking for it. There he is, Mr. Cleeg. Let's. I hope we have time for him. Let's listen to what he has to say about Black Jesus, for one, because it's applicable to all of this that you're that you're viewing. Let's listen. And Clay. Well, I think the the basic um, reason or symptom or proof for the racism of the Christian church is a simple fact that white people have pretended for so long that, that Jesus was white and that they've had the necessity to, uh, to interpret Jesus as being white when essentially white Christianity is uh, racially, uh, is, is uh, historically false and uh, theologically absurd and uh, practically in terms of its effect on black people it's a debasing uh, institution that enslaves black people. I think we have to understand, though, that this, we're not making moral judgments here. Any institution that exists in any society exists to serve the interests of the people who set it up. And Christianity uh, began as a black man's religion. It's an African religion. We have to remember that uh, Israel went into Egypt with 70 people, and after approximately 750 years came out with over 2 million people and uh, hordes of other slaves who came out and became also part of the emerging new nation of Israel. So Israel, the biblical Israel, was a black nation, an African nation, that came out of, uh, uh, of, of Africa and kept constant ties with Africa. And so we have to remember then that Jesus was a, was a black messiah, not a, not a white messiah, and he comes out of the whole uh, historical background of, uh, of Africa, 
of African traditions, of uh, African history, of African culture, the concept of uh, communalism, the concept of a chosen people, the concept of uh, kingdom of God on earth, all the, these things were uh, 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 out of African tradition, not out of the white man's tradition. And Jesus was essentially a revolutionary Messiah who was trying to lead a black people in a revolt, in a struggle and conflict with a white Gentile oppressor. So the whole church has to be viewed from the point of view of the white oppressor. The white oppressor has one kind of Christianity, has one kind of church. The black church has to become independent and go back to the historic African roots of Christianity because the slave church that the white man set up for black people tends to continue the enslavement of black people. So the black church has to become again a revolutionary instrument in the hands of black people controlled by black people fighting as Jesus fought for the liberation of black people against white Gentile oppression. Very well said by Reverend Kleeg. So, um, that's really what it boils down to. And that, my friends, is applicable not only to black Jesus, but to black, or not even, I won't even say black. That's even applicable to the Egyptians. How many movies have been, have misrepresented the Egyptians? And why? Well, it serves the purpose. It serves those who are in power. So we gotta, we have to work around the power structure. We have to work within the power structure and get around all of the BS. Oh, and it's a whole lot of it. So that's what I'm doing here. If anybody watches this, you know, then peace, peace and blessings to you. And uh, that's what's up. So in a, in a few seconds, I'm going to switch to um, the Virgil Abloh um, exhibit again. So you'll get a different perspective. Hopefully the videography is uh, better. That's it. Peace.